My PhD work is about the characterization and modeling of the rate dependent behavior of adhesively bonded interfaces. And before going deeper into the topic, I would like to give you an overview of the outline. First, I will introduce you to the background and motivation of this research. And then I tell you something about the material characterization methods, the model development and the selected validation experiments before I finish then with the conclusions. So the industrial challenge is to reduce the energy related carbon emissions and one way would be by decreasing the or improving the energy efficiency. And if we're looking in the transport sector, we see um, by having some research carried out that the weight reduction has a significant influence on the fuel consumption reduction. So how can we reduce the weight of those uh, large structures? One way would be by using lightweight materials such as carbon fiber, plastics, aluminum, titanium or other lighter materials. And it is believed that in the near future, uh, those industrial or transportation sectors are increasing the use of those lightweight materials. However, if we are having different materials such as, for example, composites and metals, we can't just use easily traditional joining technologies such as welding, um, screwing or rivets and bolts. So therefore, the adhesive bonding technology becomes more and more important. The reason for that is that with the adhesive joining technology, no imperfections such as holes are being introduced in the composite and are not going to decrease the load bearing capacity. And another point is also that through the adhesive bonding, no significant additional weight is being introduced to the structure. So to give you an example of few industrial applications where structure adhesive joints are being used, one would be the uh, latest aero engine generation of Rolls-Royce, where we have the ultra fan here, where the fan blade is made out of a carbon fiber reinforced polymer, where the leading edge is reinforced with a titanium alloy. And for the automotive industry, we have here the BMW 7 series, where the B-pillar is a combination out of a, a steel and composite adhesive joint. However, those structures, they also need to be reliable in dynamic events such as car crash or foreign body impacts. So therefore, there's a challenge to have a reliable failure prediction of those multi-material adhesive joints, especially when we're looking at this very ultra thin adhesive interface in dynamic environments. This is also the main objective of this research topic to find a contribution to a reliable failure pr a prediction of those material multi-material adhesives. So first we have to look at what kind of mechanical approaches are available where we can uh, which we can use to define our failure for performance. And in this research, the cohesive zone model uh, was quite um, useful since our adhesive interface, as I mentioned already, is relatively thin compared to the overall structure. And therefore, it is believed no representative volume element is being uh, apparent. So now for our um, modeling technology here, we are required to have some material parameters. And there are already experimental setups available for quasi-static techniques, for example, uh, to a traditional fracture mechanics specimens such as the double cantilever beam or the Antinox fracture test. And for high rate testing, we have the pendulum impact or for example, the split hopkins bar setup. However, if you want to understand and uh, get a reliable prediction, not just in uh, low rate or in high rate, we need to combine that somehow. So we can't just use um, the comparison of those DCB specimens in quasi-static, for example, with some compression or tensile specimens, which are quite small using the split Hopkinson bar. So there we can't directly compare those rate dependent parameters due to the specimen geometry mismatch. And additionally, researchers also have figured out that the shape given parameters of those cohesive zone models, which is the traction separation law, are also influencing the accuracy of um, the failure prediction of materials. So therefore, this research is addressing those challenges with uh, the overall objective to uh, contribute to a more reliable failure prediction of multi-material adhesive joints. How is that being done? First of all, the um, material 
of the adhesive interface is being characterized using titanium to titanium adhesive joints. Those informations are then being used to develop a material model. And this material model is then used to um, predict the failure of larger scale fracture mechanic specimens in uh, using titanium to titanium uh, adhesive joints in order to make sure that what we have developed as a material model and that our whole um, experimental numerical combined methodology works and makes sense for the adhesive interface. Then we go to the next step, which is understanding and predicting the failure performance of dissimilar material joints in form of composite to titanium combinations. So first, for the material characterization, we had to come up with a new experimental method. Since, as I mentioned already, we can't just use um, we can't use some uh, big specimens like the DCB test, for example, in high rate uh, environments due to the size and in uh, dynamic effects, we would end up in high oscillation and inertia where the material characterization is going to be difficult and challenging. And to um, addition to that, it is also very challenging to measure directly the um, traction separa separation law useful for the modeling with the cohesive zone model. And therefore, this new experimental method relies on um, the stress wave propagation uh, theory as we have it in the split Hopkinson bar. And this method is then also adopted in the medium rate and quasi static tests where we have a long rod with a strain gauge attached near the specimen. And using uh, in combination with um, high speed footages, we can then get our stress displacement curves, which are then should be used suitable for the cohesive zone modeling approach. Here we see some results of our um, adhesive interface tests where we tested three different fracture modes, uh, mode one, mode two and mixed mode, and three different adhesive thicknesses at three different loading rates. And before we can actually say that this method and also the use of the cohesive zone model is valid, we need to check the fractured surfaces if we achieve a cohesive failure, which in this case we have obtained. So now we can say that this experimental methodology and the use of the cohesive zone model is uh, suitable for our further investigation. So now with this information, we can go to the material model development. And we were looking at the literature and there was only one material model available which could have been suitable for us. However, we had to modify it in order to make it suitable for our investigated adhesive. We realized that um, <clears throat> our adhesive interface had a clear thickness dependency, which is being um, considered in the model. Here we see the results compared to the so-called baseline uh, material model, which is already existing in the uh, literature. And also we identified the um, different parameters like the peak stress, the dissipated energy, and also the plateau ratio are being in a rate dependent, which are, uh, which are considered in the material model. And we have calibrated this using the mode one and mode two experiments, and it can be seen that the that the model is nicely um, predicting those different experimental configurations. And for initial verification, we use the mixed mode uh, scarf joint tests, which also show very nice um, representation of the failure performance. Now, with the calibrated material model, we can go a next, next step further and use this to predict the failure of uh, slightly larger experiments. <clears throat> However, before we can do that, as I mentioned before already, those tests like the DCB, ENF or single leg bending specimen, we can't just easily use that and get uh, the force displacement curve uh, over the strain gauges when we are using this Hopkins bar. So therefore, we had to come up with a new um, way of getting our force displacement curve in order to have some validation points for our material model. So how did we do that? We uh, relied entirely on um, high speed footage and uh, used digital image correlation and the simple beam theory in order to get our force displacement curve. Obviously, this method has been verified successfully using quasi static end notch flexion single leg bending experiments and also considered characteristic time 
and um, deflection comparison for the high rate loading, just to make sure that the method makes sense and is valid. Before we then use this method and different tests, to get our experimental results for the different fracture mode behaviors. And here we first of all can see that we also achieved a nice cohesive failure of the adhesive interface. This is what we wanted to have in this case. And that also that the numerical model was able to predict nicely the experimental results. Now with this step, we can go to our, let's say, main part of this thesis to understand how the multi-material adhesive joint behaves under uh, uh, rate dependent behaviors. So for that we use the same experimental setup, the same <clears throat> experiments, only that one side of the specimen was um, manufactured with the composite and the other one with the titanium. And here also we see that the numerical model can nicely predict the failure of the experiments. However, when we're looking at the fractographies, we can see that for wedge DCB, for example, here on the left hand side, in quasi static, we see that the adhesive um, has failed. And in high rate, we only see a very thin line of the adhesive interface failure, and then the composite breaks. While in the um, end notch fracture in the middle here, which is the mode two dominated case, we see in both cases a complete adhesive interface failure. For the single leg bending, we have a similar behavior as we have for the wedge DCB. So now in order to understand why this is happening, we looked a step closer to the failure envelope using finite element simulations. We have here the um, individual rate dependent failure envelopes for the adhesive and for the composite, the adhesive is here represented by the dashed line and the composite represented um, by a solid line. For quasi-static and high rate for the two um, dominated fracture modes, mode one and mode two, represented by wedge DCB and the ENF specimen. And here we see nicely that in quasi-static for wedge DCB here on the left hand side, that the adhesive has reached its uh, failure limit while the composite is miles away from that. And in high rate, we can see that there's a competition between the adhesive interface and the composite. That here, this is what we also have observed in the um, fractography analysis, that the behavior is relatively close. And when we compare that to the end notch fractures so for the more two dominated cases, the adhesive interface is always reaching the failure limit before the composite um, is reaching its own. And this information is quite crucial to have since we can see that this uh, rate dependent failure performance of a multi-material adhesive joint from, uh, in this case, an interface controlled failure in quasi-static to a composite controlled failure in um, high rate for mode one dominated cases can only be predicted by having the individual rate dependent response of the composite and the adhesive interface. So to conclude, this thesis has developed a new experimental method which enables us to characterize an adhesive joint in a rate dependent manner and also enabled the direct measurement and use of the stress displacement curve for the use for cohesive zone modeling. And also the new cohesive zone model was uh, successfully validated by using fracture mechanics test for which a new data acquisition method was developed for dynamic uh, cases, which also we realized it's quite useful for um, dynamic delamination cases of composites in general. And also the use of the experimental and numerical combined framework to understand the multi-material adhesive joint enabled us to identify it is important to have this rate dependent performance of the adhesive joint and also of the composite. And before finishing, I would like to thank um, the Solid Mechanics Group and my group, the Impact Shock Mechanics Laboratory, the team which <clears throat> uh, contributed uh, and helped me a lot, and also Royce Royce for their funding, as well as members from the TU Dresden and Imperial College for doing the specimen manufacturing. And thank you for your attention.